A few days ago, Andrew Yang sat down with Bill Maher to talk for a second time, after talking seven months prior when Andrew Yang seemed to be lost within the crowd of the other 20 candidates, and Bill didn't seem to take him very serious. But this time around, things seem to be very different. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Yang Hub. Today, we're going to take a look at Andrew Yang's sit-down interview with Bill Maher, the host of the Real Time with Bill Maher show. But before we get into it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for almost daily Andrew Yang content. With that being said, let's get into it. Last time Yang sat down with Bill, Bill's intro of Yang was not the warmest of welcomes, to say the least. Just take a look at this clip from June when Yang first came on the show. But first up, he is a 2020 Democratic presidential candidate and author of The War on Normal People, The Truth About America's Disappearing Jobs and Why Universal Basic Income is Our Future. That's all the time we have, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Andrew Yang, ladies and gentlemen. Andrew. I haven't read your book, but I read the title. I think I get it all now. No. Uh, okay, so I'm going to ask you the same question I've asked many of the contenders who've been on our show, 23 of them. I'm, I'm going to run. It'll be 23 and me. Uh, <laughs> you can see Bill makes several jokes that were pretty much writing Yang off. But seven months later, and Yang is still in the race. And it's clear he's earned Bill's respect with this warm welcome. He's a 2020, 20, 2020, 20 Democratic presidential candidate, author of The War on Normal People, The Truth About America's Disappearing Jobs and Why Universal Basic Income is Our Future. Andrew Yang! <laughs> Andrew, now wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. Thank you. I saw as you were coming out, you were doing this. Is that a shot at Biden and Bernie that, you know, you can... Come on, it's a subtle you, way of reminding everyone you... Let's sit. Your audience can tell you he keeps the studio a little bit chilly, am I right? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's it. Well, listen, I, I missed you at the debate. You weren't I, the I, only one. I did. <laughs> I think, you know, you have a different voice and a voice that needs to be heard. One thing I like about your voice, you're the least Trump-obsessed of all the candidates. Let me read your quote. You said, if you turn on cable network news today, you would think he's our president because of some combination of Russia, racism, Facebook, Hillary, and emails. Some of that is true, but you're saying it's other things, and I would agree. Yeah, I'm heading from here to Iowa, and we blasted away 40,000 manufacturing jobs in that state. And when you go to those towns, after the mill closed, the shopping center closed, people started to leave, the school shrank, and it had n it's never recovered. And that's the story that's played out in Ohio, Michigan, Western Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. That's why Trump won all of those key states. And what we did to those manufacturing jobs, we're now doing to retail jobs, call center jobs. 30% of America's malls and stores are closing because Amazon is closing them, and Amazon is paying zero in taxes. So these are the problems that people in Iowa feel every single day. And when I talk to voters, they do not obsess about impeachment the same way uh, the folks in the right. media do. Right. America's... <laughs> I always love how Yang addresses questions regarding Trump. His tactic is to completely ignore the Trump side of the question and address the problems that are within the country instead of bashing Trump. This tactic is absolutely genius as it gives Yang a voice against the Trump community while other Democratic candidates would take this opportunity to talk about all of Trump's downfalls and turn half the country against them. Bill makes stuff. It's just that it's robots doing it. I think I read in your article something like 88% of factory jobs that were lost from 2000 to 2010 were lost to automation. Yeah. That's the issue for you, right? That you yeah, when you go to a factory in the Midwest, you don't see wall-to-wall -wall immigrants. You see wall-to-wall -wall <laughs> machines and robot arms. Yeah. See what Andrew Yang does there? He addresses a big misconception that it was immigrants that caused unemployment in 2016, which was one of the main ideas Donald Trump was talking about during his run for presidency. A very smart move by Yang, and this is something he does very often. Instead of taking the Trump bait earlier, 
he waits for the perfect time to address common misconception amongst Trump supporters in a well-mannered and fact-based way. And that's just speeding up. Uh, to the extent that you do need more manufacturing workers, which you do, they tend to be educated technicians, people who are good on laptops and not uh, hammering things into place. And in our country, only 33% of Americans are going to graduate from college. We're essentially a, a nation of high school graduates, and those opportunities are not keeping pace. So the other thing I like about you is that you are also the least I identity politics obsessed, I feel. Now, I don't see color. My staff tells me you're Asian. Yes. <laughs> you know, uh... <laughs> um, well, early on in my campaign, uh, some people told me that an Asian couldn't win the, the White House. <laughs> uh... <laughs> And, and those people were my parents. <laughs> is that true? Wow. These types of answers is what makes Yang so special. His ability to let Bill's joke play out, compose himself, and then come back with another lighthearted joke that is ten times better, and you can really tell that the crowd loves it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, my, my parents never even dreamt about me running. It wasn't even like, oh, you can't be president. It right. Was like, you, know. you should be president. Uh, well, they, they weren't excited initially. Really? Um, because Asian Americans don't really think about politics as a natural arena for us, honestly. Sure. Uh, but hopefully I'm changing that. You are changing that, yes. <laughs> yes. But, and I also love it that you make jokes. And, but some Asians don't like that. You get <laughs> pushback. But, they're, but they're, they're like jokes about being good at math. They're, they're positive. Yes. It's, it's like being kidded about having a big dick. You know, ooh! <laughs> How dare you? Now everyone's gonna know, you know? Oh. Um, well, 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 math is an acronym. It stands for Make America Think Harder. Yeah. Which is what we need to do. Yeah, you do. You gotta get good at math. So, let me ask you about the China deal. Not because you're Asian. <laughs> No, really. Really. Because you, <laughs> it was a big part of the week. You know, we obsess about all these other things. This is, again, yes. I like your criticism of the, of the media. You say, you know, I always criticize Fox News all those years, and still do, because they don't, they just don't report the news that they don't want their people to hear about. Yeah. I feel the left is getting that way, too. Now, we did sign a fi finally sign a trade deal with China. What do you think of it? What's your take on it? Well, the details haven't come out from this phase one. I talked to a producer here in the U.S., and they said that what's been signed does not actually protect them or address their concerns at all. It's more about not slapping additional tariffs on imports that were coming into the country. And I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm much more concerned about our exporters and producers, people like farmers in Iowa, than I am about uh, the Chinese producers. So to me, we don't know what's in this until we get some more information and details. Another good move by Yang. Instead of making some outlandish statement about the China deal, he gives a well-thought-out answer and then says enough information hasn't come out yet to really go into depth. And he's right there, so it's better not to go into depth than act like he knows everything like most politicians would. What about the technology stealing? Do you know about that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Well, the technology stealing is one thing, but it's Did, actually... Is that in there? Did we really get it's it? It's not clear. It's <clears> not clear. We don't have details. But I think the issue is it's not facing what the future is, which is China is actually very innovative and is starting to manufacture all kinds of things, including those robots. Those, yeah. are, those are immigrant robots in those, <laughs> in those <laughs> factories. How, how come I keep reading that the Democrats are getting their ass kicked on the technological front as far as social media, as far as ads? I remember in 2000, yeah. was it 12? Obama, their campaign was so technologically ahead, and Peggy Noonan said, I think we're going to win because I see so many yard signs. And they were like, yard signs? We're on the computer, lady. And somehow, now... It's not somehow. The Republicans were using this very early on. I remember Ralph Reed using it great effect many, many, like 10 years ago. And it's because the, the before Fox News, most of the conservatives were zeroed out in mainstream media, and so they started to use uh, digital tools rather adeptly, and now they use them in lots of ways, and they're sort of aided, of course, as Andrew knows, uh, by Facebook and others in terms of these tools and the ability to micro-target, and they've gotten very good at it, and the Democrats have just but I thought lagged. The, I thought the liberals owned Silicon Valley. No. I thought we were the ones.
friends. They were good at this shit. The Republicans were supposed to be the old man who said, you know, talked about the machine when they were talking about a tape recorder. Oh, if, if you want us to leapfrog the Republicans again, I yes. should be your nominee, because I guarantee you, as your nominee, we'd be better at technology than the Republicans come the fall. Yeah. You personally could make that happen. Sure. Wow. The perfect response, short and to the point. That's true. That, that's it's a true. big. I mean, that's a big promise. I mean, and a lot of catching up to do, apparently. Yeah, you know what? What happened in 2016 is the the Republicans did get very, very good, and then at the time, Facebook went to the Clinton campaign and said, "Hey, you want some help?" And the Clinton campaign said, "Now nah, we got it." All right. And that that was not so, the right answer. So that's it. Overall, a very good interview for Yang, and hopefully, we'll see him again with Bill Maher in the next few months. But as always, make sure you like the video. Comment your thoughts, and don't forget to subscribe for almost daily Andrew Yang content like this. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.